Nothing better than getting a new Vegeta figure. I don't care what anybody says because he is my most favorite character of the... What? Oh, th this the wrong one? I thought this was a new one. All right, my bad. I'll be right back, guys. guys mr inconsistent aka animated heroes is back here with another action figure review for you guys and this time it's of the long-awaited scouter vegeta 2.0 that everybody has been waiting on because apparently the first one had a whole lot of issues personally i like that figure i did end up getting rid of it so i won't be able to compare it to this one in the video sorry about that but um gotta say this figure looks a whole lot better having it in hand. I haven't touched it yet. I haven't pulled it out of the package. We'll take a look at that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at one very important thing. One of my favorite things to take a look at is the sexy packaging. And I gotta say, new style Dragon Ball Z packaging. Pretty freaking dope. I love it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Just, you got the name right here on the side. Cool images up and down the side as well. More images on this side. Blasting hands, cool face right there, man. I don't know. I'm always excited for a Vegeta figure. But anyway, Japanese stuff I can't read down there. Toei right there. Dragon Ball Z right there. Bandai to Machi Nation, so you know it's real cool image at the bottom. Not much going on this side right here. It says Vegeta right there. SH figure it's Vegeta right there. Cool poses you can get in right here. This scouter is probably going to be one of the dopest things about this figure. I really dig that they added the numbers and stuff on there. But yeah, Japanese stuff at the bottom that I cannot read. Barcode and that's about it. So cool packaging. I really love these packagings for the Dragon Ball Z figures now. Glad they decided to switch it up a little bit. But anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and put this box aside and bust this figure open like everyone is ready for me to do. Now, right out of the packaging, I gotta say, the figure looks extremely great. It looks better in person than it does when you're just seeing it through photos. And I know I already said that, but in the photos, it looks like it's pretty bland, like it's missing a lot. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I've seen some photos of this guy and I'm just like, eh. It almost made me reconsider my purchase of it. And I was thinking, but probably I'm just gonna get rid of this guy and get the other one back. But it does look good in person. Now, one thing I will say that I don't like is the fact that it is pretty much 85% reusage. And as you guys can see, it's almost like getting the exact same figure. And that's something that kind of ruins it for me. And my way of looking at this is kind of like, it's not for me, it's for the people who missed out on the first one. So if you missed out on the first one, I mean, this one is for you. Pick it up, don't, well, he fell. Pick it up, don't wait, because this guy's probably going to sell out too. I mean, he already sold out in Japan, I'm sure. Hopefully he doesn't fall again. But um, yeah, he does have a whole lot of reused pieces, as you guys can see, the hair, the arms, the legs, I think they're, the feet are different, but that's about it. The faces are all the same except for one. He comes with one new face, and I'll show that in accessories. But my biggest gripe, and this is something that will make or break a figure for me, is shading. I don't know why they didn't shade it. It comes, it's okay with this one because he's Super Saiyan, so he's got a glow. His gi is a little bit lighter, and they did shade in certain areas, like around the crotch area and maybe a little bit in the arms. I don't know, not so much. But um, on this one, it's just nothing. And that's what made the first one so great. The shading that was around the widow's peak, the arms, even the crossed arms were shaded, of course. The Saiyan armor was shaded. These little pieces right here, the flaps that are equipped to it, all of this was shaded, especially the legs. The legs had a pretty intense shading. And the gloves, everything, everything about the first figure was shaded. And that's just the only thing that I don't like about this figure is there's just no shading. And, I mean, they probably just put it out just for people who missed out on the first one, like I said. And so they said, we're just going to give it to them and they're going to take it how they get it. So, I mean, I don't know. That's just how Bandai is. I just don't understand the point in shading some figures and not shading others. I don't understand how they work, but this figure was pretty cheap. Honestly, it was 38 bucks, and I paid 58 because $20 shipping from Nippon Yasan. So, yeah, that's why he's the price he is, probably just because they didn't add much to it. They repainted the hair, sculpted a new Saiyan suit, and then just repainted the clothes. So, anyway, I harped on that long enough. Let's go ahead and move on so I can show you guys how tall he is real quick. 
Now to the top of his hair, Vegeta stands right at six and a half inches. And to the top of his forehead, he stands at about uh, right at five, a little bit over five inches. So yeah, pretty short. And I mean, that's Vegeta. And I think that works well. I think they got the height right. And honestly, he's about the same height as this one. So if you guys know how this one stands in your collection, you should know what to expect from this guy. Now moving right along to the articulation. Now articulation wise, he looks up about that much, not very much. Looks down that much, really good. Head can turn all the way around, of course. Does have pretty good tilt because of the way the neck is. And as you guys can see, it kind of will pop out of there. It doesn't look bad though. I think that works. Shoulder pads move up this time. I'm glad they fixed this because this was what I hated with the first one. They would always pop off. So that's how they operate on this one. They just move right up. Arms go up, if I can fix it about that much i think it can go further i'm trying not to force it but um yeah for now we'll just say it goes out about that much but you can of course wiggle that around and make them go up a little bit more if you want to do it that way and one thing i do like is they also it's on a butterfly joint as you guys can see you can move that back in there and then you can pull it out just a little bit not far but it does offer better range he has a swivel right there at the forearm he does have double jointed elbows and as always the hand is on a ball peg. That's how SH Figure Arts does it with every figure. And it's kind of hindered because of the glove gauntlet or whatever you want to call it right there. So doesn't move as much as it could, but I mean, it works. Another thing I like, he has a diaphragm joint and it doesn't have that big gap that we had with the first trunk. So that still looks good when you move it forward. He does, let's see, his waist does swivel as well. So you can turn him at the waist of course because these are two separate pieces these obviously flip out as well now his leg is on the new i don't know what you call it i guess we'll just call it system new system that they came up with with the first vegeta they released i think that's the first time they use this but uh yeah go out about that much not even close to a full split but i mean it works go forward that much go back that much that is awesome i love when legs can go back like that also, he does have double jointed knees. Now this figure is very good on his joints. That's one thing I will say. Joints are pretty tight, so you don't have to worry about it being floppy like the first one either. So yeah, that's how the knees been. No swivel right there at the boot, but um, he does have, his foot is actually, if I can show you guys, on a ball peg. So you can move that around almost however you want with it being just a little bit hindered right there. So. And of course, he does have a toe hinge as well. So articulation wise, pretty good. Um, I would say it is better than the first one by a bit, just because for one, they fixed this. And also, I mean, if you want to include this, the tail. Tail is not really articulated, but if you put the other one on, you can turn it. So yeah, articulation wise, pretty good. Now let's go ahead and move on to his accessories. Now for accessories, he comes with, of course, his standard normal looking face and i really like that it looks good on black i was actually thinking it wasn't going to be as good but honestly i think it looks better black than super saiyan honestly it looks cool i do dig that now he also comes with two fist hands as every action figure should he comes with two like gripping stylish pose hands and for vegeta you can also use these for final flash so i dig that he comes with two Blast hands, of course, every action figure should come with these, and I like these. They're the same as the old one, nothing new, but they still work. He comes with the Crush Scouter over 9,000, 8,000, whatever you want to say hand, which is something that it needed. If it wouldn't have came with this, I would have been pretty upset. He comes with another tail, which is cool. This is different than the first one. Nah, it's pretty plain, as you guys can see. There's no shading on it, but, I mean, it's cool. It doesn't move. It's articulated only on a swivel, so you can turn it left and right. Now, for other stuff, he comes with crossed arms, which is cool. He comes with, I forgot to mention this, his scouter with the numbers on it, and that actually looks really good. I give them credit for that. They did well on that. And this is the face for the scouter, so if you want to pull it off, you can just take it off there like I just did. And um, there's a spot right there where you can just plug the other one in and this is the original one that he comes with and you just slide it on there like that 
And one thing I will say is this one also stays in place better than the first one. So don't have to worry about that coming off there. As you guys can see, it's not moving around. And I'll just leave that one on for now since I've got it on there. And for faces, he comes with a yelling face, of course, which is the same face that he came with with the Super Vegeta. He comes with the Super Vegeta normal smile. And I mean, it looks cool. It's all right. I don't know. Not big on it, but whatever. And also, this is an alternate head. So, yeah, if you don't want that little gap in there, if you don't want to pose him with the scouter, it works. I give them that. I definitely give them credit for that. I'm glad they included a second head instead of being lazy. And last but not least, he comes with an alternate face that is actually different than the rest. And it's just him with his teeth gritted. Mm, nothing too major, but it does look good. So, fair amount of accessories. Could be more, but I'm not complaining. He doesn't come with the blast effects, but whatever. Like I said, this was made for the people who missed out. So moving right along. Now for some size comparisons, here he is standing next to the SH Figuarts Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Custom Repaint, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. The Super Saiyan Original Vegeta that released, I believe this was the first one. And last but not least, the Premium Color Vegeta, which is just a different version of the first Super Saiyan release Vegeta. Next up here he is standing next to the SH Figure Arts Armored Trunks, Goku, Battle Damage, and Gohan Battle Damage. And for some reason they decided to make Goku and Gohan Battle Damage but completely leave Vegeta and Trunks out of the mix. I don't know, that's just pretty ironic. Next up here he is standing next to his two rivals at the beginning of the series, SH Figure Arts SDCC, I think 20, I don't know, 15 Goku, and of course SH Figure Arts Final Form Frieza. Now, my final thoughts on this figure are that, I mean, it's cool to have, but if you have the original and you're not someone who just wants to collect them all, then you don't need it. It's good. It looks good. It is an improvement on the first one. And I know a lot of people say the first one's bad because of the joints, but I had the first one and there are ways to fix loose joints. It's just you have to buy a certain kind of ointment and you put it on the figure and it's fine. That's how you fix them. And that's what I did with my first one. So I didn't even have the loose joint problem, the loose legs problem, whatever anyone has. There's ways to fix loose joints. So if you have the first one and you're not sure about getting this one, if you're on the fence about it, you don't have to get it. But I will say if you're on the fence and you just feel like you slightly want it, get it because this guy might sell out i don't think that he's a web exclusive so they'll probably reissue him several times but just to be sure make sure you go ahead and get your hands on it anyway one thing i always tell people when it comes to marvel figures and dragon ball z figures get them because there is a big possibility that they will sell out if you decide you don't want it or if you're not sure you're going to want it after you get it get it anyway and you can always resell it and get your money back i can't stress that enough so that's my take on it it's an okay figure i don't need it for my collection i want to keep it simply because i don't have the other one and i don't want to pay 90 dollars to 150 whatever to get it back again so i'm going to keep it but um like i said that's just how i feel about this figure i hope you guys enjoy the review if you do Give it a like, give it a like anyway because this is a cool figure and you guys are here for action figures. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more action figure reviews. Follow me on everything you see listed in the description below. And as always, enjoy the pictures that I'm about to post up next. Peace.